Here's everything you need to know about the new cordless soldering iron from Miniware. For soldering circuit boards, the typical runtime is about 7 minutes per charge. However, if you return the iron to the station between soldering batches of components, you'll be hard pressed to run out of power. It packs quite a punch being able to tin heavy gauge cable with ease. Just keep in mind that heavy duty soldering will quickly drain the power. Recharging from empty takes around 5 minutes, so it's better to regularly top up the iron to reduce or eliminate downtime. The temperature control and accuracy is excellent with no overshooting. Although the iron might seem bulky compared to irons like the TS80P, due to the ergonomic shape and weight distribution, it feels easy to hold and is relatively lightweight at only 75 grams. The charging station connects to the iron via Bluetooth, and you can tune the iron settings to your heart's content. Overall, I would recommend this iron for light to medium soldering jobs. It's particularly great for assembling PCBs or working in spaces where cords are a hazard. Inside the box you'll find a manual, the base station which charges and controls the soldering iron via Bluetooth. The underside has two mounting locations for the sponge holder, a silicon type C USB cable. The soldering iron has a single button for boost mode, more on that later, a charging indicator LED and a USB port under the end cap which is used for firmware upgrading and what Miniware calls emergency charging. Lastly, a conical iron tip. The iron tips are interchangeable with the Miniware TS80 series of irons. The iron weighs 75 grams or 2.6 ounces. The body of the iron is plastic and comparing it next to the TS80P, the iron looks big and bulky. However, Miniware have designed the iron to be ergonomic in the hand, which keeps the iron feeling light and easy to hold. The iron charges through two contact pads when the iron is placed in the station. One negative of this design is the first part of the iron holder is plastic, which as I found out later, does melt on contact with the iron. No doubt Miniware have used plastic to electrically isolate the charging contacts. To avoid melting the plastic, the manual encourages the user to vertically drop the iron into the station, then push the iron into the holder as demonstrated here. To power the station, connect it to a power delivery compatible charger that is capable of supplying at least 36 watts. On camera, the screen appears to flicker, however in person the screen refresh rate is smooth and bright. In settings, you can program the working, preheat and sleep temperatures. Sleep time, idle time, temperature units, temp step and backlight brightness. From booting up, it takes around 18 seconds to go from room temperature to 300 Celsius. However, that time also includes the time it takes the station and iron to connect via Bluetooth. The time it takes to go from my programmed sleep temperature of 100 Celsius to 300 Celsius is about 9 seconds. Not the fastest iron we've seen on the channel, however it's also not what I'd call slow. I noticed early on that the station really holds on to the iron, and I believe this is necessary to ensure a good connection to the charging contacts. I developed a method of using my middle finger to push off the station when removing the iron. This means I can still remove the iron with one hand. Now let's move on to real world tests. Unlike a traditional corded iron, there is the possibility of running out of charge during a project and having downtime while the iron recharges. So for the first test, I'll be assembling this PCB traffic light kit set. 
During this initial test, the iron was run constantly without recharging on the station. The total run time was over 7 minutes before I got the low power warning. From here it took about 5.5 minutes to fully recharge. For the final part of assembly, I used the iron in a more traditional way, installing a few components, soldering them, and then returning the iron to the station. During my normal workflow, the iron would top up while I installed more components, which meant I avoided any downtime waiting for the iron to recharge. For soldering your typical components to a PCB, the iron has more than enough runtime and power to get the job done. However, what about bigger jobs like soldering stranded copper wire? For this test, I'll swap out the conical tip for a chisel tip. Let's start off with 16 AWG stranded wire and work our way up. Unsurprisingly, it has more than enough power to solder this wire. However, let's see how quickly the power drains soldering a 300mm length of 16 AWG wire. For this test, I set the iron temperature at 350 Celsius. And after soldering the entire length, the charge was down to around 50%. Not bad. Next, I tried soldering 12 AWG wire, which it did with ease. And much to my surprise, it managed to solder 8 AWG wire with relative ease while using the boost button to get up to 400C. Although do keep in mind that soldering heavy cables quickly drains power. I'd say this iron is best suited for light soldering applications like PCB assembly or repairs. Having said that, it's safe to say that this iron packs quite a punch for its size, but what about temperature accuracy? I'll be using my Heiko meter to measure the iron tip temperature. With the iron set to 300C, the tip temperature is pretty much perfect at 299. Increasing the temperature to 400, the tip temperature is just shy of the mark, peaking at 396. Next, I performed the dreaded wet sponge test. This test is useful for detecting poor PID tuning, which can cause temperature overshoots. However, there is no temperature overshoots here, with the iron quickly recovering to the set temperature without overshooting. Before we wrap up the review, let's open the iron and take a look inside. At the rear, we have a CDA 750 farad 3.8 volt supercapacitor which stores the power for the iron. The charging pads connect to a ribbon type cable with SMD components on it. I'm sure this isn't anything new, however it's something I haven't seen before. Other than that, there's not really anything of particular interest going on here. In conclusion, I have used several other cordless soldering irons including butane, battery and capacitor powered and they are all terrible for one reason or another. However, this is the first cordless soldering iron I would actually recommend to buy, assuming you need a cordless soldering iron. And if you want to purchase a Miniware TS1C iron and you'd like to support my channel, then I'd be very grateful if you use the affiliate links in the video's description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.